now for the Uranus. And you're gonna just uh, Paradise getting it. We'll see now how Peso Esports will approach this. I think that they'll ban Kaja and then Selena at this point, knowing that it can be first picked by Pes by Aether Chicks. Yeah, and uh, right now Uranus and the others, they're just. They're, they're just gonna get banned, yeah. straight up banned. I mean, the, con the, the certain amount of control that they can bring into a lane, it really just stops the enemy team from pushing down the lanes quite easily. Sorry. And that's one of the principles that we are actually seeing right now that still is, uh, you know, what do you call this, that still is a cause or an effect by the funnel meta is yeah. these offlaners, they're still really aiming to not give out that offlane turret that easily. Just make sure that you keep your tier 1 turrets as long as possible so that the lanes will always be in your favor. There's the Esmeralda ban as before. And I think that it's this time for Tudors or Peso Esports to go for the ban on the Selena. There it is. I'm actually, I'm quite surprised. I'm actually I'm quite surprised that we're not seeing as much Popo and Koopa picks right now. Yeah. yeah Popo uh... and Koopa in a way was buffed. Yeah, he was buffed. Yeah, I guess that teams will still want to get all of those good tanks now instead of the Popol and Koopa. I think Thams is gonna be prioritized now by either Two Doors or Aether Chicks. I mean, both of them. But knowing, um, okay. yep, it's gonna be Joyt. So it's Thams absolutely for for Peso Esports now to go with something like uh, Carry or Kufra. Knowing how they really like this hero, they also uh, went for carry the first phase. Carry I think Kufra. there it is, Kufra. Your you said is picking for Aether Chicks. Um, they might go for they, okay, so they go Grok. Maybe Bruno. they'll get their marksman now. Okay, or, or Bruno, or maybe Lilia actually to, to snap. Snag the Lilia. I mean, Esmeralda still, is, still really isn't up right now, so it's out of the question. And they go for Thumbs. Okay. It's a right really now. tanky setup. Exborg for the side mm -hmm. of PDRS. It, it's it's really looking like a percentage ba percentage based damage thing right now. That for the side of TDRS that they need to keep the ball going, and they go for an Exborg straight. Now for the bands, I kind of feel that you know. A marksman ban on the side of TDRS yeah. just to level it a bit because carry right now I think is the only viable mm. marksman that you have alongside with Bruno because Ranger got buffed, Excellent. Ranger got nerfed, Claude got nerfed, nerfed to the ground. Yeah. <laughs> uh, That's right. With with Dexter not getting the Demon Hunter sword anymore, it feels like majority of the heroes strength is already out apart from the fact that there's a lot of other nerfs indirect nerfs to the hero but then again wolf giving dexter that uh what how do you, how do you say this the giving nerf. dexter that you know the demon hunter sword buff or the demon hunter sword um setup in the first place was kind of overpowered yeah and if you take it out he's gonna get nerfed to the ground that's right, it's the essence it, of the hero, basically. <laughs> he, he's he's overpowered. So, yeah. where how do you put, or where do you put Claude? If you even give him a certain amount of DHS damage, mm. then he's going to be overpowered. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I don't think we're, we're going to see Claude soon. For a long time. For a long, long time, time, I'm pretty sure. Oh, there's a Harith ban. It's interesting. Lilia and Harith out. We are lacking the mages. Lunox. But it goes to Lunox, so oh! is picking. We pick it up. It's great versus Grok, honestly. So okay. I think I think now either chicks will consider getting Lolita or Cho. And then a mage. Considering oh. Kimi. Okay. Kimi is a problem. Uh, Kimi is an answer. Kimi is an answer for this. Uh, the thing about um, the thing about the carry, uh, the thing about the Lunox right now for the setup of the other team, like the Tudor side, is game number two. NXP didn't really have that reliable damage coming off from Marksman. They had uh, Hellcurt to you know 
be the fallback if ever the Lunox pick doesn't really work. But I think Carry is more consistent in a way, so they won't really have a problem. And Gatot is being, you know, they're, they're deliberating, they're thinking. Maybe Gatot is a perfect pick, but I think Cho, in a way, can really control Daryl and Gymnast if they're gonna go for this Kimi Farsa setup. Whoever goes for it, rather. Ooh. Are they going to pick Gadokach or not? Oh, I can. It's it's smart. It's a smart pick, Wolf. I, I I guess it's it's in in a way. It's you can go to the backlights seamlessly. It's great versus the Farsa as well as the mm. as the Kimi for sure. And not only because of the Avatar, the Guardian, but it's also because of the taunts and the, you can just pick up something like a Blade Mirror, for example. And, and so to, they to can, be honest, Wolf, which uh, draft do you like better, Wolf? I really don't you know, know at this point. I would say that just because of the raw speed, I still the speed of uh, taking down objectives. I still want to go for the for the Kimi Grok combo. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be dependent. We'll see how this works. As they go for the very fast cut into the bottom lane with the Kimi and then transfer onto the invade. And oh, this is had the same thing in mind. Yeah, it's, oh it's, just, it's just a mirror move at this point. Now Dario we, with the Kimi securing that. Are we gonna get that. Are we gonna get the fight? Are we gonna get it? No, gonna get the fight? It's, and what it we does are, now we is we're probably gonna get the fight. <laughs> But Togo will just run away. Guardian's parry there. I see. Jumps to the fray. There's the ejector though. Double still gonna be caught by this. And Farsa to get the last hit. That's a gymnast. The next moves coming out from both teams. We'll see how this works. But the arrival play making sure that Virus will get so much of farm. And I think that we can expect arrival to be uh, played more by teams, by our teams. I mean, for the final meta, we did see a 100% drop on that arrival. When in the first place it was the go-to pick for MPL season four, if you if you remember that. That's right. But the thing about it is the pacing of the game is kind of weird right now because you had this ultimate or not really ultimate, but it's it's a familiar, it's a very familiar tempo in which uh, you get one item for your cook carry and you just go fight. Mm -hmm. Right now you don't get that. I yeah. mean, Carry needs two items before he could fight. She could fight, rather. So, uh, I'm, I'm getting used to it. I'm, I'm actually just getting used to it again right now. Uh, let's see if the teams will get used to it, just like you, like like what you're doing, Butters. So far, I'm still not feeling the Kimi Grok combo. But I guess when Daryl gets to level four, maybe gets the update on upgrade on the boots, maybe that's when we will find it. And we'll see how teams will approach this. Gymnast as well as Daryl now grouping up, maybe positioning themselves into a mid lane push. But it comes a jump, double jump, only hitting one. But Togo will still receive so much damage, and Togo will fall because of this. It comes the arrival play coming up from Virus, got the Inferno pop, and it comes a feather. There's like they have control of the Gacha, and they will take him down. MM jumps forward, but that means that he will take so much damage from the Lunox. They get away, so that's a one for one trade off. Now I'm gonna be favoring. I'd say the Thams just because of XP, MM, as well as Gymnast wants to control this buff and they were able to get it. It comes to Farsa with the Fender and Airstrike, but it's gonna be stopped so easily. That means that they have denied the buff away from the Lunox this time. Ooh. Maybe it's just that it's not Lunox's day, I guess, Butters. Yeah. You're, when you pick Lunox, you, you just, you know don't give as much as uh, importance to the early game that early level phases like that one two three levels that you get but you always get your spike at level four and i think for the final meta that uh, that was the thing that you need to look at for the other for the other heroes that weren't really picking the meta they had a level for spike but right now on to the top lane ben thinks is trying to go for the jump togo was prepared and togo will intercept that and going back i think that's the certain you know mixture that what the funnel meta left us with is you can't have your power spike at level three or level four 
you need to get it at level 2. As long as you have your two skills, you can fight, you can get the pickups, and that's going to be perfect. And that's what Jawhead and the others bring, like Grok. Even Grok without the Wild Charge is still a scary hero. Yeah. MM with the charge, finding the Lunox, but decides against this. Uh, they have reset it, this crap going maybe away from Daryl. But they keep their towers intact. Uh, th their turrets intact. I think that's also important for Peso Esports now. Togo being a problem now. Ooh! Go for Uzumaki. That's the prep round. Uzumaki with a nice uh, flicker away. But not gonna be enough as MM still has his own flicker to go up against him. Okay. Can you guard this barrier? It's Austin Esports, but this, this is just a way for them to secure this third take into the bottom. MM with a charge, going for a Dobong Sinigang. The combo would have been good, but they weren't able to tag this Lunox, knowing that a Brilliance could be there as well. Nice Guardian's Barrier, helping Daryl deal the damage, but without any more um, energy. Mm. They just shift back to Austin Esports, who already popped the Flicker to get away. In comes the jump coming up from the Kufra. Less Insanity gonna be used. Togo and MM taking so much damage with the Wild Charge as well. But in comes the Farsa with the Feather. Their strike yeah. takes out two. Double kill for Gymnast. This time they stun off the Lunox as well. And the Dobong Sinigang will just have to back away. So in all of those engagements, Balders, only the supports died but they obviously want that to be given Turtle to gymnast because of the fact that he was able to get the purple buff once again lunox still finding a lot of trouble securing her own buff Amy making good use of that mage killer uh emblem talent that he got and uh carry he is very low he's he's very low profile right now like i see is just staying there not really moving at all he's just trying to go for the farm and this oh. is where the pain happens contest on that farm icy here will go down and wow what the per what a perfect setup for the side of either chicks they're now controlling the pacing of the game and you wouldn't really ask for a better kimmy rock game than this yeah and i think that they will try to invade this time the red buff or the orange buff Dobong Sinigang is not ready for this. In comes the Feather. There's Strike going for Ben Things. And they'll take out the Kufra. The buff. It's going to belong to a Dobong Sinigang at this point. In comes the Guardian's Barrier. Not going to land the mark. But with all of the members of Peso Esports parked in the top part of the map, Kimi was able to freely take down a turret into the bottom lane. And maybe Aether Chicks can get more. The stuns, it will not connect. In comes the Feather there Strike. The delay will make it sure that... The rest of PES Esports will run away. But the Kimi already took care of business in the bottom lane and into the mid lane as well. This is still Mage Killer um, Kimi. So it deals so much damage. The Wild Charge onto to the... Just in front of it. Daryl secures the triple kill. Or maybe secures the three points. That's what I wanted to say. Not a triple mm -hmm. kill. A three pointer in the a face. A three pointer. Yeah. on the side of Adobong Sinigang and whoever picks the Lunox loses the game. I think this is what the meta is right now. Grok is, is, is pushing up top. Wow, this is the first time I'm seeing Grok just push a lane by himself. Virus on the other hand, Uzumaki just controlling their own lanes. Feathered Airstrike will be used. Ben thinks locating that Farsa, but it wouldn't really matter because Ben Gymnast just stops that Feathered Airstrike from even popping out. And no more outer turrets here for the side of TDRS. TDRS, they are forced to hug their towers and they are forced to get whatever farm that they could get out of this minions they oh, cannot this. have access on the jungle and look at that ejector will be used adobong sinigang now alive he will be trying to contest this and all the lanes are getting shoved in the faces here on the side of tdrs okay so it's still the turtle time 8 to 8 minutes 24 seconds and the fact that mm tagged that turtle means that it will now completely belong to the kimi free of charge gymnast oh. and togo though Position around this orange buff, MM with the charge. Just uh, back down for a little bit. I think that this is another invade coming out from Aether Chicks, denying that away from Peso Esports. Bottom lane, it's a little bit of pressure from Virus. MM make it, makes it sure that Peso Esports will not overstep their bounds. 
positioning himself in that threatening position. Maximum charge already used. In comes the Tyrant's Revenge, dropping it onto Whoa. just one. But the Feather District to the Summer Shabbos. In comes the Last Insanity, but not gonna be enough. Zap stealing Summer Shabbos as well. Kufra down. Uzumaki will have to back down for this. Will dodge the rocket coming on from the Kimi. Togo and Barros combining here in the mid lane with Daryl to make it sure that the inhibitor will fall. With two members down for Peso Esports, this is a very unlikely defense from the red side. Gymnast and Daryl onto the top lane. They're just trying to push the turrets. Oh! That will be used and that is the judgment from the air as the feathered airstrike will connect. There is a stun that's going to happen and that will set up that pickoff on Adobong Sinigang. Not really the best game from him, but, but NXP, either chicks rather, I'm really getting uh, confused by, <laughs> by their name. But MM on the other hand, they are just waiting for the right pickoffs or the right initiations. They've been doing a really great job alongside yeah. Togo. And you know what? It might not be always on point in the target uh, department, but you have to really look at their composition. They can burst down anyone that they want on the side of PDRS. Now with two inhibitors down, it's gonna be an uphill climb for Peso Esports. Even if you look at this, Austin Esports is taking so much damage coming out from the Farsa. Ben thinks that the rest of the gang are staying here, but look at that feather there strike! It's gonna be a potential engage. But Aether Shik says we don't need to be aggressive now. We can just take it slowly. Maybe go for the Lord Tick. Secure our own buffs. That's what Daryl is doing now, getting his own red buff. And maybe going to the Lord area where she can just take it down so quickly with the Mage Killer Emblem. That's what they are doing now. And, uh, this is gonna be easy for them. The last piece onto the board. This could be the. This could mean the end for the side of TDRS and the upper bracket. They will probably go to the lower bracket if they secure this. But Icy and the others, they can still fight this. Look at Icy. You have to give some credit to this guy. He only died one time. Mm -hmm. This whole match. Oh, he Luno! Everything in front of him is oh, crumbling. Just... The better air strike. Uzumaki pops the ultimate, but this is just for defensive purposes. Now Austin Esports jumps in there, but only to receive so much damage coming off from Aether Chicks. Togo jumps forward, Feathered Earth accused once again. There's the Avatar of the Guardian, there's the control, but the damage is just way too much from the Kimi. They'll take out two more members, including the carry and Uzumaki, the one to only defend now. Gonna be juggled by the rest of Aether Chicks, but it won't matter in the end, as the base now is in, in shambles. Aether Chicks to secure this series 2-1.